and I was sitting beside a Nobel Prize winner, a Peace Prize winner, a man who tried to tell us the truth about what was happening in Iraq, the reality, not the invention of secret services or the feeble minds of out-of-control spies. He tried to tell us the reality of Iraq before we committed ourselves to that ruinous slaughter, that historical vast mistake, and he won a prize for telling the truth. And I was in Egypt two weeks before their brave revolution, and you can smell revolution in the air. It's like that Dylan line, there was revolution in the air that night. You can smell it. And the kids were in the bar with me, and I was saying, they were saying, it's going to change, it's going to change. And I said, but who will lead the change? And they said, al And I said, the guy's a lawyer. This is revolution. And they said, no, he'll, he'll bring the law. He'll bring justice. He'll bring the peace. Perhaps events have moved outside that wished for moment. What we can hope for Egypt is that it becomes a new Turkey, which would be excellent. Perhaps it will go wrong, but a man who tried to make it right, a man who will continue to try and make it right, a man who already has his place in history as leading the atomic watchdog and telling us the truth, is here with us tonight. And I shared a table with him and Luis and Angelina and Bianca and Heidi Marie and very, very interesting people. It's a great night, and they're here tonight, of course, and I want to introduce you to a man who's done a lot with this little law degree for our world. Ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed al Baradai, here he is. Allow me, before I speak, as a witness on the ground on our great revolution after 30 years of great suffering. Allow me to share with you two minutes in memory of those who paid their lives for Egypt's freedom. Two minutes, and it has a song, and it has footage for their mothers, real mothers, real reactions, after they knew that they have died. It says, I love my country, and tell my mother, don't cry, I have left for my nation to live. Those people shed their blood for the freedom of their country. I'm very happy to share with you a moment we treasure the most, the moment of our Egyptian revolution, on behalf of all the Egyptians. Please. Please come to Egypt. It's safe. It's free. Egyptians are waiting for you to celebrate with you their new era. <laughs> I call upon Nobel laureate Mohammed El Baradai. If we hope seriously to escape self destruction, then I believe that nuclear weapons should have no place in our collective conscience. In this area, the possibility of nuclear terrorism. We are in the race against time.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. I could not even begin to match what you have done for peace and humanity. So thank you for all what you have done to us. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world that is marred by inequity and insecurity, where three billion people live in poverty, and over 20,000 nuclear warheads hang over our heads, a world where millions continue to die in the fight for freedom and human dignity, in civil wars, or because of diseases that could be treated, where a million people go to bed hungry every day. Today, it is Syria and Somalia. Yesterday, it was Bos Bosnia, Iraq, and Darfur. We have failed and continue to wring our hands. This is not sustainable. That's why we are here today. Our problem is not lack of resources or options. It is a skewed mindset. We need to understand that we are one human family. Our brothers and sisters keepers, irrespective of our race, color, or religion, to have equal respect for the sanctity of human life whether the lives at stake are in Copenhagen or Kigali, and that we can settle our differences without killing each other. In short, we have a responsibility to protect each other, and we should act on it. In the Arab world, while we see a slaughterhouse in Syria and one before in Libya, the flame of freedom and dignity is spreading. The culture of fear has been broken, and there is no going back. Tonight, we are here to commit ourselves to be agents for change and channels for peace, to create a world based on freedom, tolerance, equity, and justice. Movies do many things. They spotlight inequality, injustice, and inhumanity. They teach, they inspire, they provoke. The filmmakers and actors we honor tonight have made their mark because of the stories they have brought to light and causes they have championed. I congratulate the nominees for most valuable movie of the year. God bless you all.